Hi, it's Mike with Utastic. I'm at RailsConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Evan Light. Evan is the or, uh, founder and lead organizer for DCAMP, uh, which is in, in Washington, D.C. Just outside. Just outside of Washington, D.C. And he's also an active contributor to open source uh, for a long time in the Ruby community. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, to, to talk. Sure. Um, so we had spoken about DCAMP a few years ago at Windy City Rails. Um, where is where's DCAMP now? Same place it was. Same place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but as far as, as organization, is it, is it growing? Do you have more people coming? Or how do you, I, I know you manage your, you like to curate your audience. I am, I don't let it grow. Yeah. I, I let, we have different people. We don't have more people. <laughs> um, I have uh, some rules of thumb I use for that, and uh, one of them is if I can't memorize everyone's name, it's too big. Yeah. So, so how many people can you memorize? I know I can do 77. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about more than that, but I know I can do 77, and I can keep them in my head for a few days. Okay. Not necessarily after that. Right, right. But at least yeah. when you're at the event, you like to keep it personal. I want it. That's, yes, exactly. That um, DCAMP is more community than conference. Yeah. Uh, well, so for people who might not know what DCAMP is, what uh, what is different than, like, we're at RailsConf, we're at a hotel. This is a conference. Yeah. People talk at you at conferences. You have breaks where you talk to other people. That's all very informal and structured and lots of crowds. DCAMP is uh, a nerd commune in the woods. <laughs> oh, okay, so it is, it's out and away from from civilization. So it's sort of. Um, it's a Prince William Forest Park. Stone's throw from civilization. Yeah, except you were in the D.C. area, so Stone's throw is a long way because of traffic. Oh, okay. Um, it's uh, just off of Route 95 South um, in Prince William Forest Park, which is a, a national park. And they have these cabin camps that um, kind of like the kind of thing you might have uh, spent time in over the summer mm-hmm. uh, as a kid. Uh, they're, they actually have historical significance. They're left over from the... Um, the pre- precursor to the CIA, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, okay. they trained in these camps. Um, so we use Cabin Camp 3. It, it supports 78 people. <laughs> and so for the other reason you stay 77. <laughs> 77 and me. Yeah. Um, 78 people, that's, that's the number of people who can sleep there overnight. We could technically have more during the day, but I'm adamant that, we, that everyone who comes, they have to stay the whole time. Okay. So yeah, the point is to get away from civilization. Um, yes, there's internet, but only if you bring it. Okay. We don't. I don't actually supply it at the, at the venue, um, but the whole point is to to get away from civilization, to isolate that group for three days, and the community forms. Okay, get some sunshine, get a little fresh air. Not so much sunshine. Oh. No, uh, trees, lots oh. of trees. But yes, <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, no, lots of fresh air. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, how do you? How do people go? Do they do you, like do an open call for people to join, or how do you? How do you how do you manage the attendees? So, um, one of the th- aspects of DCAMP is not is, is while it's an exclusive event, and I wince with that word a little. Uh, I try to be even-handed about getting pe- about having people come in and to do that. I don't choose the vast majority of people who come. Mm-hmm. I am. Um, I take advantage of Eventbrite. They have a system of creating promotional codes. Oh, okay. And so what I do is I create a bunch of different promotional codes that are good for uh, two to five registrations. And I seed those with people I know and trust in the community. Um, I feel a little bit bad doing that sometimes because over time, a lot of these people have become close friends of mine. Right. I don't want it to be Evan, the friends of Evan's camp. I want it right. to be something more than just that. But uh, but these are people who I trust. So I tell them, find talented, passionate, amazing people. And that and I explicit with them. It doesn't mean experts. That doesn't mean novices. It doesn't mean intermediate. It means all. Mm-hmm. Try to, and I also ask them, try not to find all of one or all of the other. Let, let's get a mix. Yeah. Different skill sets, different perspectives are important. It's how we avoid becoming a monoculture, hopefully. And um, then we, I kind of do that, I guess, as a few rounds. Um, see how many people gobble up codes and after the first round of codes go out and then do it until we fill up. Okay. And then if somebody can't show, do you open that spot back up? Ideally. Um, I've gotten... A few people push back against this. Most people supported this, though. Um, up until a few years ago, we would only have two-thirds attendance because a lot of people would just not show up. Right. So um, 
I decided at that point, oh, sorry, to be clear, D camp is free. Right. You just have to get there. So I think people hear free and they get a code and they sign up and then they don't feel any obligation to cancel. <laughs> but D camps cost money to produce. The, the sponsors um, pay money. They don't, frankly, they don't get any particular influence um, by sponsoring. They get their name attached. Um, the ones who spend the most money get on a t-shirt. Um, I'm thinking about having um, scholarship sponsors for to pay for travel expenses for some people who can't afford to come, but who really ought to come, who benefit from coming. Um, but the sponsors don't get that much out of it, and so not having people show up means that that's money left on the table, that's money wasted. Sponsors are losing out that way. The, and the participants lose out that way. Um, DCAMP's content's driven by everyone who comes. Right. So for if first, it's anemic attendance, then there's... Then it's anemic content, content. exactly. Then, then, then we're all less for it. So what I, I've said is if you cancel within less than two weeks of the event, you're banned. You don't get to come back for at least two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so the, he lights a fire for people to be aware and 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 it also lets people know that hey this does kind of we invited you as a as a friend and you kind of snubbed us so yeah so since i've done that we've had i think only one no show a year for two years now mm -hmm. so it's pretty much worked great and uh do you have to segue into your open source work mm -hmm. right now you're with rackspace and you're mm -hmm. working with their open source outreach mm -hmm. what what is the, what is that what is what are they doing well i guess i'm, I'm a lot of the uh, face to the ruby community um, in rackspace and well, I'm part of the so-called developer relations group, and, and our job is a few different fold. Uh, as far as code goes, I'm working on a lot of our Ruby SDKs. So that's Fog is our official SDK. Okay. And um, that is that we work with the other other developers in Fog, because Fog is a community unto itself. Right. And then we have other tools that either work with Fog or just in other ways inter integrate with our cloud. Like we have Vagrant Rackspace, which under the hood uses Fog. Yes. Um, and knife rack space, which I actually haven't touched yet. Um, paper clipping carrier wave. I think we were only we we're only just finally starting to realize that we get a lot of traffic from that probably. Right. So um, we're trying to work with those to better support fog and rack space. Um, so a lot of my involvement is driven by um, rack spaces interest in open source. But to that extent, that's just where I'm involved. How I'm involved, though. Um, I was hired with the understanding that I'd be trying to look out not just for Rackspace, but for the Ruby community. Right. And um, Fog has been around for several years, and it's used by lots of people, but for, you know, for any project that's been around for several years, there's lots of cruft. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make things better. For, like, for right now, I'm working, I'm collaborating with some guys at HP um, on writing a new OpenStack um, front end for Fog. We call it provider. Okay. Uh, I guess not really front end, which is a, you could say plug in. But it's just how you interact through Fog to OpenStack. And um, going forward also, um, we, we, Rackspace, are hosting a summit for some of the top contributors in Fog to try to create more of a roadmap and get more consensus around where Fog will go as a project over time. Um, I've talked to Wes Berry a little bit, the GMS, the guy who, who created Fog. And he, he's indicated Fog kind of grew by accretion, that he started with a fairly modest goal, but a lot of people have adopted it and thrown lots of code at it. Um, but there hasn't been there hasn't been a whole lot of stopping, catching me, catching the breath, and trying to figure out what to do next. So it's gotten kind of hairy. And so the hope is with the summit that we'll reestablish a sense of direction and uh, have some plan for going forward. So by having you at Rackspace, you're able to be that intermediary who understands and has been a participant in the community for a long time. Yeah, I go between engineering and management. See, I'm a, a people person. <laughs> I've got people skills. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak. I appreciate you bet. it. You bet. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.